Well, hello and welcome to the Anvil and Hammer episode number two. Well done. She finishes my sentences. And I can count. It's amazing. Yeah. So, the topic for this episode is Warcraft and makeup. The reason we're focusing on these two things, which you think have nothing to do with each other, and that you cosplay. <laughs> is that they were how we spent a lot of our youth. So we want to use this as an opportunity to talk about that. And instead of uh, annoying popcorn, can you hear us slurp delicious coffee? Yes. In other news, important coffee-related news, we received our coffee today from Amazon Prime. It had been a while because of Christmas and New Year. And also we bought a manual foamer. And I have to say it is better... Yes, milk foamer. It is better than than going to a coffee shop. It yeah, is. I worked out it cost twenty p for one of our cup cups of coffee per cup with the Tassimo mm-hmm. machine that we have, and oh, the it tastes so good. And the coffee is far superior than anything you get mm-hmm. here. Like we have a local Costa here, and the coffee there isn't that nice. I figure oh, it's because that. they use the machines so frequently. It's so busy in there; they don't get a chance to actually properly clean them out. Yeah. If we do, we get a flat white or I get a double shot espresso with a side of hot milk is what I tend to get in most coffee places. And it's how you can really taste the coffee, isn't it? Yeah, because you can hide bad coffee behind sugar and milk. So if you really want to test the quality of coffee, you have to get an espresso. 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 The coffee brand that we keep going to again and again is Lore, I think. Yeah, I'll... Apostrophe O R O R Lor Lor Lor. It's Italian. It's their espresso. It I think it's Italian. It's, I think it's because it says it's delicioso. Oh, yeah, delicioso. In my has to wonderful be Italian. Italian. <laughs> um, it's me, Mario. Delicioso. It's, it's Mario. It's drank coffee. Yeah, it's pretty bad. It's terrible. Mario shouldn't drink coffee. He really shouldn't. Okay, so Sarah, how did you get into makeup? Well, before I give the background, I suppose now um i use my skills in makeup to bless other people i have done weddings for christians i have done my own wedding um i have done w- one prom i did a prom here in the uk they're called proms are called debs in ireland and, and i debutante, debutante yeah <laughs> coffee <laughs> delicio <laughs> So I I enjoy doing that. I enjoy the creative aspect behind makeup artistry. And it's like painting on someone's face. I love art. I love drawing. So it's like glorified face paint. Sketching. It is. It is. Uh, But there's a lot more behind makeup artistry. Aside from that, but I won't go into that here. But my background, how I got into it was I was just a... Vanity. Essentially, yes. (laughs) Yeah, essentially. That's why most girls get into it. Vanity. They have makeup for men now, don't they? You were telling me about that. Oh, yeah. I stumbled across this startup on Amazon. So, you know, on Amazon, they have um, a section. It was like all these interesting startup companies. And I love just browsing through that to see what inventions there are now or what people are coming up with. There's man makeup. To hide all those pimples. That's virtually what it it, it was. It's this guy, like in its description of his company, he was like, why is makeup only a woman thing? And, you know, men need to look after themselves too. And he developed this brand and I looked up the reviews and apparently it's terrible. The product itself I bet you it's five times more expensive than women's makeup. Probably is. But what you're saying is basically you've learned a skill that you could look back and say, yes, I wasted a lot of time learning this skill. However, (laughs) I can now, and maybe my initial motivation for learning that skill was bad, but now I can use it. For the glory of God, I can use it to serve the church. I can use it to help people. One thing that a lot of young people, both young men and young women, go through, which is insecurity and struggling with the contradiction in culture, which is on one hand, people are completely objectified, men and women, and you know, there's all this pressure to look a certain way. And on the other hand, you just want to be accepted for who you are and you know it's a makeup is a mask it is a mask i suppose that's where my initial interest came from it was wanting to appear to be better and then also my interest because i love 
people's faces. I love drawing people's faces. I love doing makeup on their faces. Just something I enjoy. So yeah, I watched hours and hours of YouTube videos. Uh, How many hours? I don't know. I, I can't. Look, my memory doesn't even go back that, that far. <laughs> I'm just going off of what... I, I don't actually remember specifically apart from a couple of YouTube gurus that are still around today that I discovered an original hipster right here. You know, some of the huge makeup gurus now on YouTube who like have companies and they have millions of views. I was one of their first few viewers. Hipster right here. I'm not impressed. Yeah, well, I know you wouldn't be. But that just shows how long I've I had was been watching videos day for. Where you just woke up, watched makeup videos, and then went to sleep. And all you did that day was watch makeup videos. No. Because when I was watching makeup videos, there weren't a lot of them, from one thing. And generally, I had school or had siblings. I had chores and responsibilities. Okay, so I was far more reckless than you growing up. Because there was days where I would just wake up, play World of Warcraft, and go to sleep. That was my day. 16 That's hours a day, seven days a week. It's pretty much all I was doing. Investing and developing a skill which cannot be used now. You say that you may have been more reckless, but I think I definitely had a bigger issue because it was a heart attitude that I had. So I didn't watch loads of makeup videos all the time, but I certainly had that vanity and desire to be desired and all those issues i carry that around with me all the time anyway regardless as to whether i was watching youtube videos or not so youtube makeup gurus now are so huge uh especially amongst young girls and i'm very blessed that you know you say yourself that you're so glad twitch wasn't around when you were younger mm -hmm. otherwise you probably would have spent just your whole time trying to become a pro gamer or something and just like twitch all the time i'm just so glad that makeup videos on youtube weren't a bigger thing when i was younger because otherwise i probably would have just spent like you 100 percent of my time wake up just watch a load of videos on and off go to sleep and that would become my obsession hmm. um and unfortunately that's what a lot of young girls now though are doing especially younger girls they're even more insecure if you can imagine they're even more obsessed and girls even younger like nine, ten, maybe even younger are watching YouTube videos now, particularly of uh, makeup videos. And I think that's a very harmful thing based off my experience because it makes you so focused on your appearance. It further fuels that sense of my value is in my looks. It's just damaging. And so uh, and it, it makes me concerned. And then there's also the whole selfie culture oh yeah oh yeah now social media thrown into that instagram so harmful snapchat my whole philosophy behind doing makeup now is where you work off of natural beauty so i don't think there's anything inherently wrong with makeup i think it's what we do with it and and the view that we have of it True. is is what matters so what i try to do is just work off of the person's natural features and enhance them so there's the two different philosophies yes, and when it comes to makeup is approaches. Really kind of like a French philosophy, if you want to say. Like, I, I really like... And what's the other philosophy, the other approach, drag queen? Essentially, yes. So this whole, it comes from the Kardashians, if that's what you want to say, fueled by this boom now in makeup gurus, HD brows, super contour, highlight, smoky eye, Kylie Jenner lip. You probably have no idea what that is, and I'm glad you don't. Uh, and it, it comes from dangerous. that. So people, and especially young girls, aren't learning to do makeup in a way that enhances their natural features. And it, it's based off of their the way God made them look. Now it's, I want to look like this person. So I want to do my makeup. Else. Yes, it's doing makeup in a certain way to look like someone else. And they might not suit your face. So they might not suit your, your coloring. And by that, I mean tone, uh, your the structure of your face something as basic as your, your eyebrow shape you know it's not it's not based on the individual anymore people are now looking to a certain aesthetic that's popular at the moment mm. and they're kind of trying to force themselves and if they can't look like that they feel even worse than they normally do on a day-to-day -day basis about their appearance and here's my my thoughts i think the 
makeup companies are fueling those trends because all these trends are, have lots of product, don't they? They're very heavy with the application of makeup. Um, yes, it depends. It depends. So I think they're pushing these themselves because the more makeup you're using, the more product you're using, the more you're going to buy, the more you're going to consume, the more profits they make. Well, yes, they do. They just, they're only concerned about money. So if you walk into Super Drug Boots... You look at the popular brands, they are just completely going off of trends at the moment because that's what's popular. Uh, so everybody's looking to social media now um, for the trends and then they're basing their products off, off of the trends instead of making really good quality products. And some of them are good quality. But another thing I just want to quickly say is you, you mentioned drag queen makeup and that is kind of what like the Kim Kardashian look is. It's kind of drag queen makeup or slightly less extreme it's like tv or film makeup so they would have done this contouring highlighting like extreme contouring highlighting and all these other things that they do on top of that for film and television to make features stand out it's not supposed to be for everyday life Um, but that's how girls are learning to do their makeup and it just looks awful it really does and people are saying you know let them experiment let them do this do this and that and I'm not saying that it's wrong for girls to play with makeup, but what I think is wrong is people perpetuating this idea that you have to do this to look a certain way and you have to wear this amount of makeup to feel beautiful. You know, it's not it's not biblical. Um, and, you know, we know from the Bible it's not true beauty. So, yeah, that's a, it's a good question to answer as a question. What is beauty? And I believe beauty is that which conforms to the character of God. Mm. Now, God is beautiful. We know he's beautiful, even though we've never seen him. Mm. And I think his true beauty is seen in his deformity, his scars, his death, his wounds show all his attributes. The death on the cross, that's what shows us true beauty. That's what shows us the character of God. That's what's really beautiful. And uh, Peter says something about beauty, doesn't he? And his He says a lot of beauty, yeah. I'm trying to read it here. So it says, Do not let your adornment be merely outward, arranging the hair, wearing gold, or putting on fine apparel. Rather, let it be the hidden person of the heart with an incorruptible beauty of a gentle and quiet spirit. So there, there again, appealing to the character of someone. Beauty being an incorruptible because it's gentle and quiet, which is very precious in the sight of God. For in this manner, in former times, the holy women who trusted in God also adorned themselves, being submissive to their own husbands, as Sarah obeyed Abraham, calling him Lord, whose daughters are you, if you do good, and not afraid with any terror. Yeah. So this again, this appeal to God, the character, is what makes someone beautiful, not an external. It's almost like the Pharisees. Jesus said, you are whitewashed tombs. Outwardly, you are beautiful, but inwardly, mm. you're full of dead men's bones. Yes, and that, yeah. that's what I feel what celebrities are like. You know, outwardly, they're all concerned about the appearance, mm-hmm. but inwardly, they're spiritually dead. Mm. and on their way to destruction, and they need Jesus Christ. Yes, and I personally struggle with that um, chunk of scripture mentioned from First Peter because uh, for a number of reasons, but mostly because since I was young, I was so obsessed with the outward, with my appearance, that it still can be a struggle today. And I, I have to try and remind myself um, that, I should be mostly concerned with what how God sees me. And God when God looks at me, he sees Christ. I'm clothed in Christ's righteousness and Christ is beautiful. Um and I should look to God for my joy and my happiness and my fulfillment, not my appearance, because mm. I'm made in the image of God and this is how God it made me. God formed me in the womb he knew me before i was a twinkle in my father's eye uh you know he knew exactly how i'd look that's the same for each and every person on earth and it's completely opposite to what i naturally am so it's only by his spirit that i can be any of those things that i, I can be truly beautiful it can only be by christ so that reading came from first peter chapter three verses three to six mm. great well, thank you sarah mm. so because i suppose 10 years ago no one was really making a living off youtube alone no There's nobody sort nobody. of just i think at the time i think the biggest sort of group was smosh 
And I think they were getting into monetization and kind of getting into the whole YouTube partnership and getting things going in that regard. I suppose I, I finished secondary school or high school playing video games 16 hours a day. It's literally all I did. I come back from school, do my homework really quickly, play video games, go to sleep, do that on and on. Weekends, play video games nonstop. Summer, play video games, like literally 16 hours a day, sleep eight hours or sleep five hours and then eat in between that. And you develop a skill in video games. And this is why I try to encourage young people not to invest so much time and energies and skills which can't profit you in the future. I left secondary school without any skills. I really regret not getting a summer job, working minimum wage, a hard job that builds in a good work ethic and motivates you to work hard in other things. And I suppose I left secondary school with only one skill. And at that time, it wasn't marketable. Now it probably would be marketable. I probably could at that time through Twitch and other things. You could make a good shot trying to make a living at it. At that time, it was only esports, which was very arcane. In Ireland, it didn't exist. So I was looking into moving to the UK. Like I actually did this. Looking into moving into the UK. Where would I have to live? Yeah. Well, how much could I possibly earn? And I just realized the game that I, I got I got good in World of Warcraft wasn't a good esport. So then I looked at FPS at the time. I was looking at Team Fortress 2. And that scene's even... It's quite small as well, so that's, that's also very difficult to break into. So then I figured, well, I'd have to learn a whole new game, which basically means I'm back to square one while I have no skill. So I abandoned the, abandoned the idea. I think it's by God's grace that I did. Going through that, that's actually how I got into media production because I'd play video games, record them, and make montages. And even today, through editing and things, I've been able to implement my knowledge from World of Warcraft where you have to execute commands on the keyboard very quickly. And I've been able to use that with my editing. Yeah. Right now on my on my software, I've got a program that synchronizes the key bindings of all my programs. So no matter what I'm using, Premiere Pro, After Effects, Illustrator, the philosophy of the keys are all the same. Yeah, so I think one of the reasons I play so many video games is because it was sowing into, into the flesh and not into the spirit. You know, there are certain things in my life I didn't like at the time. And this was one way of escaping. So instead of conforming my mind to reality and studying the scriptures and drawing close to God and seeking God as my comfort, my comfort was sought through the flesh, through immersion in a fantasy, in a video game. And World of Warcraft, I think for many people, was their first online experience. For me, it was. I would played a lot of games, but they weren't online. You know, on the PlayStation 2, there was no online play. Some games had LAN play, but, you know, it was difficult setting up. This was the first online game and the novelty of going up to someone and talking to them. And that's an, actually another player. And that being in this huge immersive world where you just sort of keep on expanding this map and it keeps on growing. And, you know, friends in your school are playing it as well. And you can meet in the game. And it's, it was just, it was completely something that you've never experienced before. Did and that happen? Did people from school play? Well, yeah, well, we had... Uh, that's I, th I suppose that's what made it also so tight bond because you, you're it's community. You have friends involved in it. So detaching yourself from the game was to detach yourself from your friends. It's almost like a church. You leave a church, mm. you know, you're leaving all your friends as well. And that also made it difficult. So I think when it comes to video games and, and makeup as well, I think this is where they have a commonality. It's really about power, being in control, being dominant having things your way. Yes, I suppose. Essentially, it's what is, I am God. I'm going to be God. I'm going to determine what is reality. I'm, in a sense, you can feel powerful in a video game. And then if you're good at it and you're able to dominate other players. Mm -hmm. And yes. with makeup, it's the same. You put mm -hmm. makeup on, you can feel powerful. You can, mm -hmm. you can sort of manipulate people, mm -hmm. bend them to your will. Mm -hmm. Here's the thing with that type of living, idolatry, making yourself God, exalting yourself, is that there are no winners. Think about video games, there are no winners. Because either that you can either play straight away and lose, or you're investing so much time that you're winning, but you're still losing because you're not accomplishing anything. You're ultimately sinning by putting that much time into something that doesn't bring God glory and that's not the focus. So therefore, it cannot prosper because all sin 
takes you away from the characteristics of God, of peace and joy and love and satisfaction. So the more you sin, the further away from God's purposes and plan you're going to get. And that's why these things can never satisfy. Yes, I think um, with obsessive gaming and obsessively being into makeup and doing makeup and things like that, I think it's like a vicious circle because with gaming, um, you know, there's that aggression, and particularly with young men, you know, am I right? You know, they're kind of naturally aggressive and you play video games and there's this competitiveness and aggression. And the more, the better at gaming you get and the more and more you game, the more aggressive you're going to get. It's the same with makeup. You're insecure. It's vanity as well. And the more and more you get into makeup, the better you get. The more vain you become. Mm -hmm. The more obsessed with your appearance you become. It's the so lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. Mm -hmm. And these things are of the world, and the world is passing away. Mm -hmm. But he who does the will of God abides forever. And this is the will of God, your sanctification, that you abstain from sexual immorality. It's God's will that we conform to the likeness of Christ and that we act like him. Mm. We mimic him. We are image bearers of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. So if you are a young man or a young person, let me ask you this. Do you spend more time investing into video games or into Christian mission? Are you spending more time reading your Bible or playing video games? Are you spending more money seeking to promote the gospel? Or are you spending more money in video games? And this is, applies for makeup as well. Because Jesus said, where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Mm. So is your treasure on things of this earth or things above? Set your affections on things above, not on things of the earth. For you are dead and your life is hidden with Christ and God. That's Colossians 3 verses 1 through 5. One thing that really encourages me, because I can still have times where I feel dissatisfied. I feel like my joy is gone because I look to myself. I look to my flesh again, instead of looking to Christ and to the cross and what I'd say to people is just to look to Christ and he will bring you comfort. It's ultimately to do with the heart and okay, you, you might be gaming more than you are giving to Christian missions or you might be spending more on makeup or watching more YouTube videos than you are reading your Bible. If that is the case, it's the way to resolve this is not to start doing those things. It's to start looking to Christ, giving your heart to him, crying out to him in prayer. And that's what I did and do when I feel as if my joy is gone or I'm looking to myself. I just cry out to God. I pray to him because God is an amazingly loving God. One thing that just astounds me again and again is the fact that God hears my prayers. He answers my prayers and he wants me to pray to him. I'm only one person among billions, yet he knows every single detail about me. He cares about the little things that happen in my life and he's willing to hear me and he wants me to turn to him. So this is James chapter 5 verses 13. Is anyone among you suffering? Let him pray. Is anyone cheerful? Let him sing psalms. Is anyone among you sick? Let him call for the elders of the church and let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer of the faithful will save the sick. And the Lord will raise him up. So the idea is that if we are suffering, if we are dismayed, it's not to turn to the flesh, but turn to the spirit. Seek God in prayer and praise and through his word. Draw close to God, he will draw close to you. That is the answer to your depression. That is the answer to your lack of joy and it's not found in making yourself god and feeling that you can dominate people no matter how you're doing that in your life and it's not feeling that you can make people find you make people attracted to you or you find your worth and value and what other people think of you it's the only thing that matters is you're standing with god and before god one psalm i turn to a lot of the time when I'm having str struggles is Psalm 3. And I could read all of it out. It's, it's a wonderful psalm, but particularly the verses that I go to are from verses 3 to 6. But you, O Lord, are a shield for me, my glory and the one who lifts up my head. I cried to the Lord with my voice and he heard me from his holy hill. I lay down and slept. I awoke for the Lord sustained me. 
I will not be afraid of ten thousands of people who have set themselves against me all around. And I, I love the the childlike simplicity or the childlike faith uh, David has in God when he when he uh, describes this. He says, I lay down and slept. I awoke for the Lord sustained me. So we can trust in God. We can give our issues to God. We can rest in him because he is our father. He's our heavenly father who loves us. He sustains us and he watches over us. So I, I always find that very assuring. Okay, I think it's time for hammer time. Oh. It's hammer time. Hammer time. Get it? Anvil and hammer. Okay. Yeah, anvil and hammer. Ding, ding. We're about to iron sharpen iron. We're about to hammer out some biblical truth right here. So this is from John chapter 14, verses 23. 24. If anyone loves me, he will keep my word and my father will love him and we will come to him and make our home with him. He who does not love me does not keep my words and the word which you hear is not mine, but the father's who sent me. So basically those who love Jesus will keep his words. In order to keep his words, you have to know his words. So you've got to know the word of God. You've got to know what God commands, what, God te- what Jesus taught. And then by the power of the Holy Spirit, and through the process of being born again, you will desire to do those things. And you will desire to have a pure conscience before God, clean hands and pure hearts. And this is our worship towards God. We present our bodies, our lives as a living sacrifice before God. Mm. So if you love God, you're going to treasure his great commission more than video games or makeup or mm-hmm. anything. You will value the word of God and the truth of God's word above everything else. Wonderful thing as well as if we don't, God is merciful towards us to help us. We can cry out to God and and ask Him, Lord, help me love Your Word. Help me turn from this sin. Help me desire You above what my flesh desires. Because sometimes the flesh can drown out our spirit. The the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. And so therefore, pray. That you not enter into temptation. Yes, and God is faithful. He will answer those prayers. Right. Now, we're going to move on to a section where we're actually going to play the armory. We're going to do an attack challenge. So, Sarah, do you want to pick an attack challenge card? Should we shuffle shall. these? Yes, shuffle these first. I do. On the website, you can download the armory and you print out the... For free. You print out the game and you just cut them out. So, I've got these cards here that I've cut out. And uh, Sarah's going to pick one. Scripture memory. Ask the game master to give you a scripture memory card. Memorize the scripture for 20 seconds, then receive the missing scripture card. Read the card out whilst adding the missing words. For each correct word, you will receive plus one attack point. If you gain five points, you can trade them for might. That's not relevant here. Yeah, because it's the initial challenge. So I've got to give you a scripture memory card. And as a parent, you can change the scripture to whatever scripture you're learning as a family. So I've provided ones which I think are good scriptures to learn. But you can customize them. Exactly. That's so. the that's another wonderful thing about the armories that you just kind of make it your own in a way, tailor it to your family devotions and what you want them to learn from the Bible. In the store in the armory. You can buy video timers for the game. You can just use any old timer on your phone or get an app. But these video timers are tailored for the challenges in the armory. Very easy. All you have to do is play them and pause them. And also a lot of the information about the game is at the end of the video. So it makes it really easy to do the timed challenges. So I'm going to play the, the first one here. In case you have 20 seconds to memorize the scripture. Three, two, one. You shall not bear down to them, nor serve them, for I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children to the third and fourth generations of those who hate me, but showing mercy to thousands, to those who love and keep my commandments. Exodus 25 to 6. You shall not bear down to them, nor serve them, nor serve them, jealous God, visiting the fathers upon the children to the third and fourth generations. Time! <laughs> Done. <laughs> okay, okay, here's so the challenge. Now I've given you a card which has taken out five of the words, key yes. words that you have to put in. So go. 
You shall not bow down to them nor serve them, for I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children to the third and fourth generation of those who hate me, but showing mercy to thousands of those who love me and keep my commandments. And what is the verse for your bonus two attack points? Exodus 20, verses 5 to 6. Well done. You got seven <laughs> attack points. Hey. Well, thank you very much, everyone, for joining us for the Armory. Next time, we will continue the challenges. You will do a defense card challenge, then after that, utility card challenge, and then from that, we'll be able to allocate your class, and we'll actually play the game, start picking up boss cards and start taking damage and putting on the Armor of God. Thank you so much for listening to us on the Anvil and Hammer. If you want to support us, you can do that through the store on the website, thearmoryboardgame.com. We also have a Facebook group if you want to connect with us there. It'd be really great. And we hope that this has blessed you and that we'll see you next time. God bless. Okay.